You're watching New Car Spin. This is the Mazda CX-50 all-wheel drive Skyactiv-G Turbo. We do have a video on my channel with Yale doing a trip to uh, California to drive this when it had their press launch. And here we are on a ranch driving it off-road. Clearly I'm somewhere. And uh, well, I got one wheel off the ground. You can see it has a tow hitch. It's all-wheel drive. It's bigger than the CX-5. It's a little wider. For the specifics, go watch the other video where Yale sat through a whole presentation, basically the, the timeshare and drank the Kool-Aid. Today, I'm actually gonna compare this vehicle to the Kia Sportage. And you'd be like, why? Why would I do that? Well, it's not because of the price point or the size. It's just because they're both here at this ranch. And I'm off-roading both of them and, uh, well, amongst other ones but i just feel like the way this thing drives is a little different it's much more uh peppy it's sportier than the sportage but it feels different than the sportage off-road and what i mean by that is uh well i'll have to cut to the sportage and show you but if here i mean you can just hear the You can hear the grass just, you know, making its way along the underside. So whether or not that's uh, the protection pans or not, what we'll call them skid plates. Uh, I don't know if this has skid plates or not. We should probably look under it real quick. Let's do that. And then we'll cut to the Kia. What do we have? We have a lot of plastic. Plastic everywhere on this thing. Yeah, a lot of plastic. And part of, part of that's for fuel economy and everything else. <laughs> My cursing. The ESPN or some kind of, some kind of radio guy. All right. So yeah, the Mazda is, you know, it's nice, it's peppy, it's, it's a good car for uh, people who want a small um, off-roader, but not wanting a Jeep, I guess. What is the purpose of this thing? Who knows? Maybe it's because they have one in the lot and it's in your price range. But what I want to do is just give you an experience of what this sounds like. And then we'll cut to the Kia and, you know, the on-road manners are different between the two, but so are the off-road manners. And I know no one really off-roads these things, but I think you can really discover a lot of a machine when you push it to its limits. And that's what automotive journalists do. I myself don't bother you with the specs because, you know, you can go look that up and read that for yourself. What I'm trying to do is journal the experience. Sort of like if you look at my other channel, Diesel Drives, I took diesel vehicles on long road trips to discover what they're like and, uh, you know, journaling it along the way. So, of course, now diesel vehicles are dead, but what you have is a catalog of what it was like back in the day to be able to go 700 miles, for instance, on a tank of fuel. And, uh, yeah, that's what I did. I journaled that aspect. So there's the Kia right there. We're gonna hop in that next. And what I wanna do is just give you the experience back to back. I'm not even gonna do a cut, no cuts. I just wanna go back to back. Park next to this Pathfinder. Whoa. Easy on the zoom there, Brian. Pull this up, turn it off. Boom, all right, let's zoom out. Okay. Just for comparison. All right, Mazda, window sticker, blah, 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 43,170. Okay, get my hat here, because I don't need it, but I'm gonna use it. Okay, that versus two, 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 four by E, Rock Creek Pathfinder, TRD Pro Tundra, Kia Sportage. Ooh, power seats. 
I like the Sportage more, to be honest. Okay, so the Mazda had really nice vented seats. We have vented seats here as well. We got our uh, temperature adjustment there. Volume adjustment. Where is the volume adjustment? I'm gonna put it on mute anyway. Okay, you could tell we had some radio host in this car because it's on Sirius Fox News, unfortunately. All right, so this panel is really cool because it's actually a touchscreen panel, but it also looks like a just a display. Very nice. I'm going to turn the fan down just a little bit. There we go. Actually, you know what? We'll put it on auto and then auto one. There we go. Put it in reverse. Here we actually have drive modes and a locking center diff. So it's a little bit more robust, I think, than the CX-50. We're going to go take this on the trail. And as far as the comparison and the cabin comfort, this feels bigger than the Mazda CX-50. I think it is bigger inside. Maybe, um, obviously, fore and aft. Not necessarily width-wise. I think width-wise the Mazda is a little bit bigger, but you never know. There's my cruising again. <laughs> All right. So this feels a lot smoother off-road. I don't feel any of these rocks. I don't feel any uh, displacement in the in the ride quality. It's it's butter. It's almost like I'm on I'm hoverboarding here. Let's go right over this part. This is the rougher part. And it feels lifted, just like the CX-50. It feels just a little higher than normal. Not a car, not a truck. Let's see if I can just turn the fan down a little bit. There we go. And we'll see if we have any grass making weird noises. A little bit, but not as bad as the Mazda was. Yeah, so there you go, back to back. Definitely, I prefer the Kia Sportage, which is weird, but not really because back in 1998, maybe, 97, 96, uh, actually my mom bought a Kia Sportage for some reason. And uh, the Kia Sportage, funny enough, my neighbor owned a Kia dealer, so that's probably why. Um, the Sportage had a Mazda Miata engine in it. So if you were all a Mazda fan and you like a CV, get the old school Kia Sportage. They even came in a manual. My mom bought a manual Kia Sportage and it had the Mazda engine. It was kind of kind of slow, but the Mazda engine uh, made it very, very unique. And Kia Sportage has always had just a little part in me a little bit for being just a really cool little car, despite uh, the the way the current buyers uh, drive them and whatever, you know. I'm just saying for for me, I like the Kia Sportage and uh, oh, there's Jesus, Jesus Garcia. <laughs> oh yeah, this is definitely very compliant. I like it, I like it a lot. I'm gonna make a left here. All right. Some some off-road noise here, but nowhere near as gnarly as the Mazda. And that's kind of where I'm gonna end it. I will end it properly though, by stopping right over here where there's hardly any high grass. And I will pull out the window sticker. It says not final. Oh, well, this is why I like the Kia Sportage more. <laughs> okay. Wait. <laughs> what? No, that's the Mercedes C300. Okay, this is not a Mercedes, but, uh, well, there you go, uh, Kia. Let's see. Maybe I can find the window sticker in here. Nope. Nope. <sighs> As they say, no sticker price, so it must be free. 
All right, well, go look it up for yourself and you tell me what the price was because I have no clue. Welcome to the world of automotive journalism. Uh, it's not the manufacturer's fault. There's actually a company that supplies uh, the vehicles to the journalists so that the manufacturers can do other things with their time. Oh, here we go. Let's check out the articulation. And this is where I started the Mazda video, so this is where we're going to end the Kia. Oh, look at these tires, too. These are much more off road worthy tires. All terrain TA, BF Goodrich. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's definitely off the ground. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Kia Sportage X Pro. In my mind, far superior to the CX-50 if you are going to off-road. So if you live in a place like Colorado, for instance, uh, a place where it snows, this might be worth it. And you do have skid plates. Let's see. We checked on the Mazda, but do we have them here? Either way, I'd, I'd drive this first before I drive the uh, drive the Mazda CX-50. And that looks like leaves of three, let them be. That's gotta be poison oak. So these shoes are trash. Great. Just great. <laughs> All right, Kia Sportage, drive it before the CX-50. Let me know what you think. Oh, look, I also have a heated windshield uh, hard to tell. There we go. Those lines are heating elements. So definitely set up for Colorado where you can get in and turn on the heated windshield and, and it'll defrost faster than using the heater defrost, uh, front defrost option. Very nice. Okay, lunchtime. I gotta go meet up with the uh, homies of the Texas Motor Press Association. Go get lunch and uh, we'll continue with more vehicles off-road. Thanks.